Question 104, leak code, maximum depth of binary tree. So given the root of a binary tree, return its maximum depth. A binary tree's maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from root node down to the furthest leaf node. So here we have a binary tree, maximum depth is three, where we have three, 20, 15, or three, 20, and seven. We need to work that out. So there are a number of different solutions to this question. We'll go through two of the most common ones. The first one is a recursive solution. So with any recursive solutions, we have base case and a recurrence relation. Great, so in a base case, just think of the most simple tree you can think of. So let's just say we have a tree that's just null. What are we gonna be returning if we have a tree that's null? Well, we're looking for the maximum depth. So, well, if root is equal to null, return zero because we're gonna be returning some kind of number some kind of integer. So we need to return zero here. So that's the base case solved. With the recurrence relation, we're gonna be returning a maximum depth. So we need to work out the maximum depth between the left subtree and the right subtree. So we can do that by simply doing math.max or a max method and passing in the left subtree and the right subtree. So that'll be this tree with this tree. But we also need to take into account the root because at the moment, nothing is going to be returned here. So we need to specify the root as one. So it'll be one plus max left and max right. So at this point alone, we have one, but we now need to check its left subtree and its right subtree. So we create the recursive call on this subtree and on this subtree. So this becomes one and then it checks its subtrees. So nothing is going to be returned here because it's going to start a new section here. Root is equal to null root is equal to null, so it's gonna return zero back. So zero is gonna be returned back here. And we have a one here, so it's gonna return one up here. But we don't add this to the one here yet because we need to compare it to the right subtree. And at this point, the right subtree is one. Then we compare it to these subtrees. So this is going to be one again, and this is also going to create check null and null. That's gonna return zeros. It's gonna go back up to here and return a one here. So it's gonna be one plus one. It's also going to check the right subtree. So this is going to be pointing to null and null. So we have null, null. Those are going to return zero. This is going to return one here. So it's going to choose the maximum between here and here, which is going to be one because they're both the same. So we have two here. This is going to return two to here. And then one and two are going to be compared and it's going to be added to the one. So it's going to be one plus two so the final answer is going to be equal to three. So this is the first solution. And time complexity here is O of N because we need to go through each node within this tree. And space complexity is also going to be O of N because within recursion, we are using a stack data structure to store these values in temporarily and they're gonna store each and every value. So with this solution, it's very quick to write out. So we write the base case out. So if root is equal to null, Return zero. Else we can return math.max max depth root dot left max depth root dot right. So we're comparing the left subtree and the right subtree, and we need to remember to add one because we are including the root here. Let's run that, see if that works. Let's submit it. Great, so that's worked. Okay, so let's go on to the second solution. So the second solution involves breadth foot search. This is more of an iterative solution, um, which traverses this tree level by level. So it looks at this level first, then this level, then this level. And along the way, it increments depth. So we're gonna have three things that we need for breadth foot search. We're gonna have a queue. Remember, recursion is a stack. Breadth foot search is a queue. We're gonna initialize it with the root, so we're gonna pass three in there. We also need a current value, and we also need depth, which is going to be zero to begin with. So with breadth of search, we create a loop, and we loop through the first level. In this case, we've only, had, we've only got one, so we need to do that. So what happens is we shift off Q, we pass value into current, so Q has now been emptied. We check three's children, so we look at the left subtree and the right subtree, and we see if there are any values in here. Yes, there are, there's nine and 20. So we can add that to the queue. 
Right, now this part of the loop is complete. So three can be removed from current and depth can be incremented. So this is now done and that is level one. Now we can restart the loop with the new values in Q. So we can shift off of Q, we can pass nine into current. We can check nine's children, see if it's got a left or right child. It doesn't in this case. So we can just remove that and we need to now shift off of Q again. So 20 is in current now. We check 20's left and right child. It has 15 and seven, so we can add those to Q. We can remove 20 from current and we can increment depth again. Now that is the second level done. So that's level two. On the last level now, we can shift off of Q. So we add 15 into current. We check its children. There are none, so we can remove that. We check seven, we shift off of seven, add it into current, check its children, there are none. So we can remove that. And now we can increment depth by one again. And that is the final level. And we just need to return depth now because we exit the loop we created at the start. With time and space complexity, time again is O of N because we need to go through each node within this tree and space is O of N. But in this case, we are using a Q to store the values rather than a stack, we still need to store each value within it. So space is O of N2. Okay, so firstly we're breath of search. What I forgot to mention in the explanation, if root is equal to null, then we return zero because we need that sanity check. We have the depth, we need to initialize zero. We have the Q, which we initialize with root passed in. Then we create the loop based on q.length. So as long as something is in q, carry this out. So we create a reference to q and then we loop through the level. So i is less than len i plus plus. Here is where we check to see whether there is any values in the left and right subtree and we push them into q. So let current equal q.shift If current dot left is true, Q dot push current dot left. So we want to push the value within Q and the same with right. So if current dot right is true, we push into Q the value of current dot right. And once this loop exits, we have finished that level, we can increment depth. And once Q is emptied, we will exit this while loop and then we can just return depth. Let's check to see if this has worked. Submit it. There you have it. There are two solutions to solving maximum depth of a binary tree.